Hey, what's up YouTube? So my channel is based around coding in general, but primarily algorithms and data structures and studying for the technical interview. A lot of you comment stuff like, I can't do leak code easy questions. I can't do easy hackering questions. I'm having trouble starting off. How do I start off? What do I need to know before I start doing these problems? And I just want to give a guide for what you should know, I guess, before you start these questions. And then once you know that stuff, what resources I've used to get to the point where I'm able to go out and get a job whenever I want. I actually just got a brand new job and it was on my second interview. It was that easy. So I just want to talk about how the resources I've used to study to get to the point where I'm at. I'm going to give you every single resource right here. Uh, and that's it. So the number one thing that you need to know before you start prepping for your interviews or learning algorithms and data structures to solve leak code easy, hack rank easy questions is you need to understand what data structures are and what time complexity is. There's no way for you to come up with an optimal solution if you don't understand how one solution differs from another as far as time and space complexity. So you're not going to be able to know how to improve a solution if you don't know how to improve time complexity, if you don't know how to identify a solution's time complexity and then improve it. So you need to know how to do that first. I'm going to give you an example right now. So for example, if we have an array and we want to print each element, and let's say one iteration takes one second, meaning if we're doing a for loop and printing each element of the array, it takes one second to print five, then one second to print one, then one second to print negative 10. So it would be one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, six seconds. So each iteration is a second. This algorithm is a linear time algorithm because the seconds go up with the number of iterations directly in a linear fashion. So as our data set grows, so if we have a data set of size six, it takes six seconds. If we have a data set of size six million, it takes six million seconds. Now, when we have an algorithm that involves nesting for loops, we're looping through the entire array with the inner for loop. So this inner for loop is looping through the whole array for each iteration of the outer loop. So you could see that this is an O of N squared. You could see how much slower this is moving. So if you're looking at this and it takes one second per iteration, look, one, two, three, four, five, six. That was the whole time it took for the one for loop uh, algorithm. But now we're going back. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And in this case, as the data set grows, the time it takes to do this also grows, but in an n squared fashion. So if the data set is size two, it takes four seconds. If the data set is size six million, it's not six million seconds like the other algorithm. It is a huge number. So that's why there's a huge difference in an algorithm of nesting for loops versus a single for loop. And there's a huge difference between an n squared algorithm and an o of n algorithm. And there's a huge difference between an n log n algorithm and an o of n algorithm. So even just small differences in time complexity make a huge difference as the data set grows. So that's why it's really important that we come up with good algorithms to solve these problems. So what you need to be able to do is look at an algorithm, look at a solution that you've come up with and identify what is the time complexity as the data set grows in big O notation. So there's O, main, the main ones are O of log of N, like binary search, O of N, a linear search, O of N log N, like sorting, O of N squared, O of two to the N, O of N to the N, O of N factorial. There's all these different time complexities. You need to be able to look identify what time complexity your solution is, and then figure out, can you make a, an improvement to it to make it an optimal time complexity for the problem that you're given? Now, oftentimes understanding how to improve these time complexities is going to be based on your knowledge of algorithms, fundamental algorithms and fundamental data structures. So you're really gonna have a difficult time getting into doing lead code, hacker rank, and just preparing for technical interviews in general without the fundamental understanding of fundamental algorithms, fundamental data structures. So you need to take some kind of course or learn these in some way, however you may do it, wanna do it, to get this fundamental information like time complexity, like space complexity, like the fundamental algorithms and data structures. And once you have that 
just a basic understanding. You don't need to understand everything, but just a basic understanding. Then you can move over to these sites and that's where you can really kind of start to figure everything out, do it, pattern recognition and get better. So the first thing I'd recommend doing is starting with data structures. Algorithms often involve using data structures, so you wanna be familiar with these first. An easy way to get started is just typing data structures in on Google or YouTube and watching some of these videos. I highly recommend CS Dojo and HackerRank. This crash course also might provide a very good overview, but I really like all three of these specific channels. You might wanna start with some overview videos to try and understand what a data structure means in general, even though it's really just a structure for data. Some structures are better in certain scenarios, so using some data structures in certain scenarios will be more beneficial than other data structures, right? And once you understand that, or just looking at a brief overview, you might want to hop into these HackerRank videos where you can see, you know, they get a little bit more detailed and specific. You can look at stacks and queues specifically, linked lists specifically, trees specifically. These aren't going to give you every detail about them, but they will give you an overview of each individual data structure. And these are a lot of the basic ones. So hash tables, trees, tries, heaps, stacks, queues, linked lists, arrays, all of that watch all of these videos. Another site I used a lot was Coursera. Coursera has some really good courses on data structures and algorithms. Uh, University of California, San Diego, I took this course. It was pretty good. I took an algorithms course on Coursera offered by Stanford. That one was also really good. Now I would recommend if you're going to take some of these Coursera courses, not getting too wrapped up in the proofs and technical details they provide because sometimes they go into a little bit more detail than necessary. What you guys really just need to do is understand the basics and just understand why we need to use certain data structures. Another course I really, really liked, uh, even more than the Coursera courses, was this MIT Open Courseware Algorithms course. A lot of these algorithms courses you'll find online will go into data structures at the same time. But specifically, I really like the videos by this guy, Eric Domain, so feel free to watch these as well. Now, I'm not saying that you have to understand everything about data structures algorithms, right? I'm saying you need to know the basics, basic data structures, basic algorithms. And so don't get into the details too much, but also what I th say uh, your comfortability level should be after you are ready to move on to solving problems is when you can implement these data structures. So if you can code the data structures by just opening a text editor and writing, for example, class linked lists and starting to implement it. So maybe go on YouTube and look up how to implement a linked list followed by whatever programming language you'd like to use. And if you're comfortable with reading, there's sites like Geeks for Geeks or just blogs and articles on other sites like Medium where you can find them just explain it in text. So if you don't want to watch a video, you can just scroll down and they'll show you with images and text how to implement a linked list. So really understand the operations, look up the time complexities of the operations for the data structures and say, hmm, why would I want to use a linked list over an array in this case? Why would I want to use a hash table in this case? And once you understand that, I think you'll be ready to jump into LeetCode and HackerRank. One site I've mentioned multiple times in the past is Pramp. It's one of the only free peer-to-peer -peer video chat connections where you can sign up and get connected with other engineers who are studying for these interviews as well. This isn't a sponsor. I just really, really endorse this because I used it a lot and it really helped me. There's not too many sites where you can just meet random engineers who are learning algorithms and data structures and ask them questions like Pramp. So maybe check out this website as well. I think it's really helpful. But other than that, just reach out to your friends if you have questions. Um, if you have friends that are engineers, they might have gone through this and they might be able to explain something that's really confusing. Talking to other engineers is one of the best way to understand concepts. So communicate with people. Now, I did read some books, but I do think they were really technical and I thought the videos explained a lot better, but I read some of this book, so Introduction to Algorithms. This is a really popular, famous book. I read some of it just because of how much it was recommended to me, but I did find videos a little bit better. One book I definitely love was Cracking the Coding Interview. 
uh, this book is super helpful in, uh, for me understanding time complexity and other things in general, just about the interview process. I think, uh, this, uh, Gail Lockman McDowell just really puts you in the right headspace for the interview. So I definitely highly recommend this also not a sponsor, but, uh, this more than the other book. So these are most of the resources that I used. I will link them in the description, but also I did go to college. So I took algorithms and data structures in college. I wouldn't say the algorithms course was any better than things online, but I learned a lot of data structures while I was in college, specifically how to implement data structures. And when I got stuck, I did have a teacher that I could ask. So find a way to communicate with other people. So when you get confused, you can ask someone who knows. That's pretty much it, guys. I forgot to record an outro, so this is just me hanging out in my room. So, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know what you guys use if you are successful in algorithms and stuff. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. Those are all of the resources, like everything uh, from when I was in college until now of what I've looked at and understood. A lot of YouTube videos, a lot of online courses, uh, the algorithms course in college did not help. So really the only thing from college I liked was data structures. And other than that, everything else was online. So, so there's definitely a way to really get good at them online. And then once you have all that stuff down, like I said, then you're ready for uh, lead code and hack rank. And yeah, start with the easy ones, work your way up. That's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.